about those who are alive and they are grumbling. I'm talking about those who are value life, who are happy that despite the fact that money is not in their pockets, they are happy that despite the fact that they can't pay their house rent, they are happy to be alive. If you are the one, shout hallelujah. Let hallelujah for those who are sure they will not see them.
Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Turn with me to the book of Prophet Isaiah, chapter number 6. Chapter 6. Are we in Isaiah? Yes. Some of you are still looking for this. Open the back of your Bible after the revelation. Praise the Lord. Have you seen it now? Yes. Or are you still looking for it? I like certain things in that Isaiah 60. So I will try to restrict myself to the passage I was giving. But the whole of Isaiah 60 is just human. Isaiah 60 and verse 15. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellence, the joy of many generations. But what I was trying to read that, I said I should read 14 too. Now listen to this. The sons of them that have lifted thee shall come bending unto thee. All they that despise you shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet. And they shall call you hmm, the city of the Lord. The Zion of the Holy One. If you are the one, say Amen. The topic I've been giving eternal excellency. Say eternal excellency. <laughs> to be excellent means to be, to be extraordinary. Yes. To be outstanding. Yes. To be in a state where you are possessed, you have qualities that are eminent, qualities that are distinct and different from every other person. And of course, the word eternal means lasting forever, endless, everlasting. Are you very happy what I'm saying? Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. So for eternal excellency means for you to be relevant forever. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. To be relevant forever. Hey! Hallelujah! 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 This is God's promises for his people. But you can't accept that promise when you check Isaiah 59 towards 59 toward the end. From beginning, he said, Look, my hands are not short. My ears are not dull that I can't save you. But your sins and your iniquities are separated from you. And towards the end, as they came to repent, he said, Now I will arise. I will show mercy unto you. I will restore back everything that you have lost. And then in chapter, he now opened chapter 60, verse 1, and he said, Arise, shine. As a result of the fact that I have forgiven you, as a result of the fact that I have redeemed you, as a result of the fact that of Lagos province. A few weeks and months and years ago, the Lord brought something to my mind. Now I began to ask, why are we celebrating adoption? Listen, some of you don't know what to have. This church, like we say, is the first Pentecostal, and it's a highly spiritually led church. Now, members approach our fathers and say, what will we celebrate? Do we celebrate harvest like every other person? I said, no, we can't do everything like every other person. Let's find out from God what he wants us to celebrate. And they were sitting there, and God came up to them and said, listen, don't bother about celebrating harvest, which is a shadow. Don't bother about doing what others do. Do what I want you to do. They are not aware of God again. They are not aware of the new birth. They are not aware of all these things. Listen, celebrate your new birth. I'm 
said, I, the Lord, will make you, 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 you. Who am I speaking to the other day? Two times he was forsaken and hated. Forsaken. Hello. 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 Before we leave here today, we will buy a microphone for the Lagos province. Because every year we come around here, there's a problem here. Forsaken and hated. Forsaken and hated. Those are two terrible things. They are upon you and they despise you. Give me this one. Hello. Abandoned and hated. Two terrible things. I don't know who I am thinking to hear today. You may have been hated by your in-laws. Hated by people around you. They despise you and forsook you and forgot about you. God said, I should tell you, it's going to work upon you. And I will make you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. And he so demonstrated his power in the life of Abraham that up to today Abraham is standing out. That's the kind of thing he's talking about here. Whether even though you are gone and dead, you can't be forgotten. He came to a place that was blind. He dug well. Water came out. They came to fight with him. They quarreled with him. They contended with him. He didn't mind them. Listen, because he understood what God has deposited inside him. Don't fight over one year year man in your village. Don't fight over any property. This is because he is not worthy. If they take you one in your village, God will give you one in UK. Your own man has little problem. You are moving to that level in the name of God. Why fighting over mundane things when you carry God? Why? I keep sharing this with all pastors wherever I go. God last month is to divide the land to the Israelites. As the prophet said, divide the land to them. And he looked at the tribe of Levi and said, See this ones, don't need them anything. I said, Why not? Then I continued to read it and he said, Because I am their inheritance. <laughs> Do you get that? God said, I am your inheritance. Now, by priesthood, you and I are the new Levites. Are you aware of that? So, your inheritance is not in material things. Your inheritance is not in anything but in the Lord Almighty. You carry God. You have God. You have possessed God. You have inherited God. Oh my God.
together. Yeah. So what is it that is making you to look inconsequential? Talk to your neighbor, wake up. Oh, my God. 
you, they ask you to activate over your life. Your rights, your rightful inheritance as a child of God, as a son, as a daughter. Small, small fishermen, unknown inconsequential men, little of them, like eleven of them, they encounter the extraordinary anointing and gift of God. And the Bible says they turn the whole world upside down. Eleven men, no men didn't go to school. What are you You, 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 so here the word of the Lord today. You are different. You are unique. You are not like any other person. And I say this today, it's not about competition, it's not about money money, it's not about trying to outsmart the other person. It's just being who you are. When the contender is I he didn't fight with them, he said, you don't understand what I carry can produce several words. And you move forward. That's the kind of God you have, and that's the kind of gift he has given to you. In the face of storm, you are, you are happy, you are peace. Beyond understanding, joy unspeakable. What you make you cry, you are smiling and they are asking, Is she right? Is she in her right senses? And you say, Yes. Even though this is about to save me, I have the Lord who is going to turn this around. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, whatever be the negative thing you are passing through today, as you hand everything to God Almighty, He will turn it around for your good. Beauty will come out of you. Beauty will come out of you. You have, never, you have never been, I will make you. So, and you stop going around looking for who will make you. Ask God to make you. Say, Father, make me. Father, make me. What you want me to be. The prodigal son, he turned back in his right senses and said, Father, make me. He didn't ask in where he was going, he wanted to make himself. He wanted to be like every other person. When you pray the right prayer, God will interfere, intercede, he will come around and then make you. Say, Father, make me. Father, make me. If you are here today, you are looking for the fruit of the world.
now and forever and ever. The Son and the Holy Ghost. Be our honor, glory, and majesty forevermore. Amen.